Hi guys, it's Piper. I am head instructor at Evolve Artist and I'm here tonight with Kevin Murphy, founder of Evolve. And today we are going to talk about how to start painting better portraits. So I get asked this a lot by students and potential students. And Kevin, I'm sure you've heard this a lot in your career as a teacher. Um, it's kind of the million dollar question. How do I paint a portrait? Um, I think that the majority of people think painting portraits is nearly impossible um, and the hardest thing to paint. But you kind of feel otherwise. Uh, so let's kind of jump into how people can start painting better portraits. Okay. Well. Welcome everybody. So to kind of start this, I've been a portrait painter for 20 years. So this is actually an area of expertise for me. It's not that I, you know, I teach Evolve and, you know, I have some idea about what portraits are. I have built a career that's spanned 20 years doing nothing but portraits, basically. And so my experience has been that the thing that trips people up the most is that they think, they think differently about portraits than they do about something else, right? We, you know, if we paint a still life and, you know, let's say we have a ball and a cube, right? It's a very simple still life. When we tackle it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Now, most people who haven't been trained in art, how to make art, and sadly, a very large percentage of people who have been to colleges and learned to make art that way, they've basically, they've basically been taught to paint what they see. And that is a, catastrophe waiting to happen, right? Because, you know, when you put a ball and a cube up on a table, it's very easy to see the ball and the cube. It makes sense of it. There are no, you know, no overwhelming number of details or decisions to make. When you try to paint a portrait that way, the amount of information that you're taking in is, is it's almost incalculable. And so if you're trying to paint what you see, making sense of it is, again, it, 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 turns, it turns what could be a very simple painting into in just into an unclimbable mountain. So the first thing you have to do in order to be able to paint a portrait <clears throat> is have a process that equalizes complex subject matter and simple subject matter so that a portrait and a bowl and a cube are basically the same thing. The same tools are applied. So with the Evolve, you know, for anybody who's looked at some of the things that we do in Evolve, in grace, we start in grayscale and we think in terms of shadows and lights, and then the edges that connect them. A ball and a cube are comprised of shadow shades and light shades, and they have edges, either sharp or graded, that connect them. And a face is exactly the same, exactly the same. It doesn't have any extra parts if you're doing it in grayscale. Now, if you're painting a red cube and an orange ball, now you're dealing in color value decisions, right? How dark or light the red is, and how dark or light the orange is, but you're still dealing in lights and shadows and then the edges that connect them. And a portrait is no different. And so the idea is that if you have a structured approach to moving through a painting from blank canvas to finished, to finished art, it should work equally for simple and complex subject matter. And so that's really the starting point. So many people, you go to art school, and this is this is really, like for me, I, I find this the biggest rub, is that you go to art school, you spend whatever you spend. I mean, nowadays, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars, and all they do is tell you to paint what you see. It's what they do. Even in the, in the, the education, you're basically being given things and being told to, to see stuff. But there's no, there's no clear-cut process for simplifying the information that's in front of you. How do you break down a face, right? And so what happens is you get some people who are really like insane and they, they burn the candle at both ends and they're constantly working and, and pushing their, their skill further down the road. And so they start with simple things and they get a little more complex and a little more complex and they just eventually work their way up to something like a portrait, but it's not a big jump. And they don't have a process that works equally for the two. What they have is they have a process for the simple things and a process for moderate and more complex, all the way up to complex things. But it's different approaches for each thing until they've really kind of got some years under their belt and they start to see how they connect, right? But most, of, most people, the way they learn it is the way they teach it. So if you learned it that way, yeah, you know what? That's how I learned it. So that's how I explain it. And that you get a lot of that. And so the idea is that in order to be able to, to paint a portrait, you need to have a process 
that neutralizes the complexity at the beginning, allows you to build the structure of the head of the face before you get into the details. Okay, so like I could paint a cube and it's very simple. I have one side as a shadow, one side as a light. I've got maybe light on top. It starts out as a box. It's really simple. But let's say that that cube also had, it's cut from wood and maybe it has some wood grain. Once I've got the structure of the cube in place, then I can turn my attention away from the structure that tells us it's a cube and start putting in the details. With a face, if you start with the structure and you can get the structure right, it already looks like the person before you start dealing in details. I, I wanna show you just how irrelevant the details are compared to the structure, right? So again, I'm talking about a simple cube has say one shadow, and two light shades, one on the side and one on the top. A face could be broken down into one shadow shade and one light shade. Now, we'll start and we'll think in terms of grayscale. Daniel Folta did a, a really, really wonderful job recently. And Piper, if you can like grab the, the link for that thing, did a wonderful job of explaining how to break down a face. He was um, critiquing a, a student's work and he did a wonderful job of breaking down and making sense of it. And I recommend if you haven't seen it, check out that link and go look at it after this is done. You'll get a better sense of how all of this works and what I'm describing. But the idea is that if you can create a shadow and a light and basically just get the, the, the shape of the shadow right and the shape of the light right without any concern for eyes or nostrils or the mouth or the ears, just basic shapes, no details, one shadow shade, one light shade, create a two value graphic you'll be able to recognize the face right away. That's not, we're not even talking about gradients. We're talking about just the two values following the shape, the contour of where the shadow and light meet. <clears throat> but again, the idea is simplicity is key. Don't try to make a finished portrait. Develop the first stage. Get good at it. Get really good so that you've got confidence. But like I said, I mean, Daniel Folter did a really, really wonderful job of on that critique with the portrait definitely go out and check that out. What I just said will make a lot of sense when you see that. And we have some great questions already to kind of add into this. Yeah. Um, Nicholas asked, so what parts of the structure are the most important? So we kind of talked about going down the middle of your face, following the brow, the nose, the mouth. Right. Um, so when you're doing this, how do we know